Learning Target 423 asks us to graph equations with special domains and identify their ranges. So it's a lot like 4.2.2 in that we're going to be graphing lines. It's just that our lines are going to be a little more special here because we have special domains, like x is greater than or equal to 0, or negative 2 is less than or equal to less is less than or equal to 2. Let's take a look at 6a first. It says graph y equals x plus 1 with a domain of x greater than or equal to 0. Whenever we're given a specific domain, we always want to make sure we use the endpoint. Here, 0 is kind of the stopping point. It's the lowest value that we can select for x. Maybe I'll pick a couple more values. x has to be greater than or equal to 0, so maybe I'll pick 1 and 2 for x. So if I look at 0 first, 0 plus 1 is 1, 1 plus 1 is 2. If I plug in 2, 2 plus 1 is 3. I start graphing these points, 0, 1, 1, 2, 2, 3. So at this point, I think the most common mistake I saw was people went and just took the liberty of connecting the dots like that. Can't do that because, again, they said our domain, we can only pick x values greater than or equal to 0. Well, the x's are greater than or equal to 0 from here and in this direction. So what that means is I can't have anything on this side. So I need to chop this graph back to this point right here, and it ends up being a race. It has an endpoint at 0, 1, and then it goes to infinity and beyond in the other direction. Now, in 6 or 6b, maybe I'll start with that. The range of this particular function or this equation. We look at the y values. Range talks about your y values. And if you look at your y values, well, here's my y axis. Do I ever hit negative 1? No. 0? No. Yes, I hit 1. I hit 2 and 3 and 4, and I keep going up. So basically, I've got a low point right there at 1. How do I describe all the numbers that are bigger than or equal to 1? Well, I'd say the y values are greater than or equal to 1. If we look at 6c, here I've got one, two stopping points. So this graph is going to end up looking like a segment. Again, when I select my x and y values, I should always use the endpoint. And maybe I'll pick one value between. Zero is usually an easy number to throw in there. Negative 2 minus 2 more is negative 4. 0 minus 2 is negative 2, and 2 minus 2 is 0. Plot those points, negative 2, negative 4, 0, negative 2, 2, 0. I know I'm probably OK because they're in a nice line, but I can't take the liberty of just going like that and saying it goes forever in every direction because I have to stop it when x is negative 2. I have to stop it right here, and I have to stop it when x is positive 2, right here. So we need to chop that graph back to that point right there, and chop it right there, throw some endpoints on it to make it a line segment. That would be the graph. And then your range, again, talking about the y values. Look for your high and lows. The lowest y value is right here at negative 4. The highest y value right here is at 0. And I hit everything in between. So how do I describe that? Negative 4 is my low number. 0 is my high number. Again, when you're writing these special domains and ranges, the ranges will always mimic the domain. So if I have one stopping point in the domain, I'll have one stopping point in the range. Two stopping points in the domain, a low and a high. Two stopping points on the range, a low number and a high number. 